Remember our walk yesterday when we gathered plants and items for our fairy gardens? Well, in today's part two, we're now gonna make cute little houses out of polymer clay to make these gardens come alive. Okay, so now we are at the step that can be super fun, especially if you're doing it with kids um, or it, I don't care who does it. It's it, I think it's just fun no matter your age. And you don't need many things and it's not expensive at all. So we're gonna make a little polymer clay house for our teacup garden. And all you're going to need is some polymer clay and you really only need either tan or white. I have a bag of miscellaneous white here so let me get some of the white out. And the brands that you'll find around here in America that are easy to get are Craftsmart, which is the Michaels brand, and they will sell that to you curbside right now, so you can just order it online and pick it up at the door. It is $1.69 a brick, so you will get, gosh, you could probably get six houses out of this one brick, if not more. So definitely a very inexpensive way to go. And you can get it in just one color or multiple colors. That would be up to you. Um, and the other brand would be Sculpey. It's a little bit more expensive. But both Craftsmart and Sculpey I recommend for beginners because it's soft and pliable and inexpensive. And um, if, if this is your first time working with polymer clay, you don't want it to be this really um, very hard clay that you really have to condition a lot. So you'll need a brick of clay, an old-fashioned match, or something like it, and I'll tell you why, and a toothpick. And literally, that is all you need to make a little house for your teacup garden. Now, if you want to get a little extra fancy, you could throw in um, a little some rubbing alcohol, which you'll I'll show you how to use after. And if you do, if you're not new to polymer clay, you can get some um, bake and bond oven bake adhesive, but it's not necessary at all. And I'll go into that later. Those are all optional. So these are the three things you need, and that is it. So I'm gonna make my house white. And all you need to know about polymer clay is that in order to make your project let you know, be the strongest it can be, you need to condition it. So that means even if it is soft coming out of the package, you want to make sure that you're, you're making it um, smooth and malleable. And you're basically what you're doing is you are enacting the polymers and the clay, you're activating them and getting any air bubbles out and getting your clay ready to make a project. So that is all that I need I just did that and I mean this this is probably you know maybe an eighth of a package is my guess and remember how we found some uh, acorn caps in the woods well I just happen to have a whole box of them because that's the kind of nerd I am and basically I will go in and find one that I like I love that little look at that's just like a little roof. And if I have a teacup, that's gonna be just the right size, just the right size house. They can also look like they have little chimneys. So why don't I make a couple of houses? I'll make different kinds of roofs. I have a few here and this is going to be about as easy as easy as it can be just make sure that your working space is clean because polymer clay will pick up every little dirt and dust particle that's around it is a magnet usually usually I say take a wipe and wipe down the area first but you may be short on wipes because of the pandemic so I'm just going to take a little alcohol and clean 
this is just a tile a ceramic tile like you use um, for home projects that you can get at like a, a home store like Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that and I highly suggest working on them they're absolutely great to work on and then even better to bake on so I have a little one that we'll bake our project on so all I'm going to do is take this chunk of white polymer clay my tripod might go back and forth a little bit because I'm <laughs> rolling on the table that the tripod is on and I'm just making a ball first and then taking that ball and with two fingers rolling it into a cylinder like that then I'm going to take this side and make it flat and this side and make it flat and I'm just going to roll it into the shape I want and then I'm going to try I'm not going to put the, the roofs on yet I'm just going to try them on to see if they fit so this one does fit on this on my cylinder of clay this one's a little bit big so this one fits the, the best so I'm going to put that on like that can you see that put it on the top and then I'm just going to press down that's going to make my little house just a little bit more chunky and it's going to make my cap a little bit more secure now at this point you have two choices you can use your adhesive or you can just put keep your cap on and bake with it on and then after it's all baked take it off and put some um, super glue under there but I have the adhesive so I'd rather do it now so I put that on my house and I don't know if you can see this but it's already picked up some of the fle flecks of dirt and a little bit of a mark from my finger so this is where you want to come in with a q-tip and that rub rubbing alcohol you don't want to use a lot but you can come in and you can clean off the surface of your house you can smooth things out you can take off the dirt just kind of clean it up but you know what it's a little tea cup house that's supposed to be in the forest so I mean if it's got little flecks of dirt I don't think the recipient is going to care that much so I'm going to say here's the chimney or the way I see it in my in my mind this is the chimney you gotta look for that where's the front of your house what do you like as the front of your house And I'm gonna say I like this as the front of my house now there's a little bit of schmutz here as I call it because when I put the cap on and take it off I guess the best thing would be to put the adhesive on before you press it down so that you don't have to take that the cap off again so I'm just gonna blend that in because I don't like that line and that is basically the you know gonna be my house so this is where you're coming into some pretty fancy materials here old-fashioned matches which you can get at the dollar store and you get like 12 of these have the old kind of matches that have the square wooden um, shape to the match and all you're going to do is you can use this part for the door to press the door or you can look for something in your house that has a rectangle shape I found this pair of tweezers and I like that shape so I'm going to line it up where I want it on the house and then I'm just going to press it in see just like that 
And then I'm going to take the square tip of the of the match and I'm going to press it in for the window. And that's it. That's literally it. If you want to get extra fancy, you could take a toothpick and put a little hole where the doorknob would be. You could make some lines in the door that maybe look like a little bit like wood. You could even put some little dots around the door if you wanted. That's really it's really up to you. Now I think the dots are cute, but I think the door now is too busy. So this is literally where you can go back in with that Q tip. And just smooth those lines right out. And if that window isn't big enough to your liking, just pull the match side to side and use that flat edge. To make it how you want it to be. I'm going to fix this little dots here. Put my doorknob hole in again. And that is my first house. So let me see if I can make a couple more houses really quick. And I'll show you actually a little alternate way of making a house. Let's say you don't have a cap and you just want to make a little tiny cute little house. What you can do is make that cylinder like we did before and then take something flat. I'm going to take the little tile and just press down and that makes a flattens one side and press down again And keep flattening until you have a um, rectangle. Then grab a knife you can take a blade and cut a peak. It's not quite even. But you know what? It's okay. I can just tap it on both sides. Again, this these are fairy like little fairy teacup gardens. They don't have to be perfect. You can even just pinch it if you want. And then what you can do just go in with a match and make the door. And put the windows in. And maybe you want a window up here too because it's a little bit of a peak. You can make a little house that way as well. So we'll make that house and let me make another little house with the, this cap and actually I'll make this house that's a little bit different. I'll make a ball 
and then I'm going to roll on the I'm going to roll on an angle. So I'm going to hold my fingers at an angle when I roll it. Kind of hard to see from the top. Like that. And then I'm going to put a little of that adhesive because I don't want to mess it up. Put it right here on the top. Now I'm going to press down. And that's like a little chubby house. A little round chubby house. And I can just find that tool I had. Well, maybe I'll use the match. And then I'll put the door in and the window. Maybe I only want one window there. That's cute. Now you're going to make sure you take your toothpick and you can either bake the toothpick in. You want to put the toothpick in like that. You can either literally bake with the toothpick in like that or you can put the toothpick in after. That's totally up to you. I'm going to bake with it in only because that way I don't have to be worried about if the hole gets deformed at all that I can't get it in after. And let me make one more little tiny house like this one. Let's just do a little tiny. When these houses are done, I'm going to pop them in my oven. Each polymer clay brand cooks at a different um, temperature, but both Sculpey and CraftSmart um, bake at 275. So I'm going to bake it at 275 for, I'm going to say about a half an hour, 20 minutes to a half an hour. I'm going to say half an hour to be safe. Now, instead of doing that, I'm just going to pinch, oops, pinch the roof. door and the window. So I'm going to go pop these in the oven right now and then we will finish our teacup garden. So here we have two little houses and two of this kind. I will lay them on here. And I'll go pop them in the oven. Okay, our houses are done. They're out of the oven. They've cooled. You need to let them cool. If you don't have a, if you're just making this kind of house, you can actually take them out of the oven and dip them in ice water and they'll be cool in a matter of seconds. You might not want to do that if you have one of these on, um, or you may. I mean, they're outside in the rain anyway. It's not like these are not waterproof. But anyway, here are the four houses. So at this point, you could leave them just like this, which is kind of cute just on their own. Let's see if I can grab the little teacup garden. Voila! Very, very cute. Or you can add a little detail to it. So if you wanted to add a little detail, you can get some acrylic paint. and uh, You know, like craft paint, again, what you have laying around the house and you can use a brush but I have these like pen art styluses I use them for clay all the time but I also use them for detail work because they're so easy to control I don't tend to have a very steady hand 
So I just get it covered with paint. And then I can just come in here and paint the door. Like that. So I'm just now painting and you could you know make try to make it cute like um, if you wanted to you could put little details other places on your house like let's look at this big guy here let's I could probably paint the door with a brush. This one's so big. Try for a second. Let's paint this guy. Now, as far as the roof on these go, and as you can see, if you get a little paint on, you can just scratch, scratch it off with your fingernail or you can use that you know um, you can use the alcohol again now for the roof you could always just paint it brown like this you could leave it the way it is Maybe come in a little bit here, like that. Maybe I want it to be a little thatchy. So you could paint a roof, or you could take some of that dried moss that we found in the woods and you could put a little super glue on it and you could make a little natural roof you know with like a little bit of a um, maybe this one would be better example you could just put a little super glue and then make a like a little roof like that I've seen that done and that's super cute too but for now I'm just gonna paint because that's what I have available. I don't have super glue down here in my studio and I'm just going to paint the roof. I want to make it look a little thatchy. Let me revisit that other guy. It's pretty dry now. So just because I'm making a video doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes like everybody else. I had this grand scheme idea where I was going to make a window box on this little house with, um, you know, with my acrylic paints. And anyway, it didn't end up working out. I tried to make it look like a window box, but it didn't. And that happens sometimes, you know, it's all about experimenting. And just because somebody is crafty or artsy doesn't mean that every single thing that they make comes out great. So I was going to cut this out and I thought, you know what, I think it's more important to show that we all just do our best and try. And um, anyway, I think it's even better to show how to fix it. So that's what you're going to see next.
So if you do something you don't like, you just can go in with alcohol and clean it right off. So maybe I tried that and I just was like, I'm not a big fan. I don't think it really was something I liked. It didn't come across as a window box. Let's start again. So here we have our little guy here, and I want to put some like little flowers on the bottom. So I'm going to take the big stylus, and I'm going to take some purple paint. And I'm just going to make a few dots like that. And I'm going to let that dry for a bit. And I'm going to come in and then maybe also do some blue. I don't think there's enough blue in that. And I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And let's just take these little, this house and this house, which I think this is really, oh, I might add a little gold paint to that. I like that gold paint. So I might just add a little to the roof, just to make it a little bit more special. Now, keep in mind, you can't wipe off gold paint off of, acorn cap so make sure you really want to do this before you do it you can wipe off mistakes off of polymer clay because it's hard and kind of non-porous but not so much on something like this but I like the idea of it being gold just a little bit Okay, so I think I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him in here. And I'm just going to stick him in. Doesn't that look cute? And we have the other little house. I wonder if two would be too much. Let's let's see what we can do with this. This little house, we can take the gold paint. Hold on. I kind of want to match the gold paint on the other house, but Nothing I did I really liked with the gold paint. And nothing I did on this roof I seem to like. So maybe what I'll do is a series of dots. And I'll put that I'll put him in there too. Can you see that? That's adorable. Okay. So that means we still have oops, this garden, which needs a little help, I think. It looks a little something's missing in my mind in this garden so this is where we're going to have to i guess i have my big acorn house which is going to be the center of that garden oh i have this guy too 
So let me put him in that garden. And then let's see if we can, if this is dry enough now, I can go in with the pink. <gasps> Oops. Oh, see what I do. I'm kind of a hot mess. Nope, no use in crying over skilled, spilled paint. Just move on. Those look like little flowers. And if I had green, I could make like little leaves. I don't think I have green on me. I have this sea mist pearl, but I don't think. Well, we'll see. It might, I don't know that it's going to be the right color and I don't have a lot of colors down here right now and it's a little bit pearlescent so it's not really but we'll throw it in I'll let that dry and then I'm going to put that in the last garden and I'm gonna put a few other little things like some of this in there and some gems and I'll paint a little house on the front here and then we'll finish up by seeing how they came out so here we are it's the end of the day and I just wanted to show you how our little teacup gardens turned out um, I think they came out cute I think I'm partial to the simple houses with the moss, um, but really I like them both. Uh, I might suggest that this is a typical garden that you could get with things you find in your yard or the woods, but if you wanted something a little bit more polished or colorful, you could go to a, a garden center and ask for fairy garden plants or succulents and those will be uh, slightly more under your control as far as color and texture. But, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to make these cute things. So, happy Mother's Day. I'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, the moms of kids, the moms of fur babies, godmothers, aunts, grandmothers, basically anybody who gives love and the way a mother does. Happy Mother's Day. We appreciate all of you. I hope you'll join me again for another craft with me. Take care.